So anytime we're dealing with a variable that just represents a magnitude, I'm going to put a dot on top of it. This is just a symbol that I, that I invented. You won't find this symbol in any textbooks. Um, because when you're good at physics, you don't need a separate symbol for magnitude. But again, um, us here who are participating in this video, we're not so good at physics. So we need a separate symbol so that we don't get confused between the signed number and the unsigned number. The acceleration and the magnitude of the acceleration. Okay, um, now um, as I make more videos about physics, I'm going to be using this uh, symbol uh, more and more often here. So again, um, if we just write the variable by itself, that's going to indicate the signed number. So we have to include a plus or a minus. If we want to indicate that we're specifically discussing a magnitude, which is an unsigned symbol, um, we're going to put a dot on top of that. And even though this is not something your instructor is going to do or your textbook is going to do, this is something that I recommend that you do. Um, your instructor doesn't do this because he's too good at physics to need it. Um, but maybe you're not so good at physics yet, so you really probably will benefit from having a separate symbol for magnitude. Um, because again, we need to be hyper-conscious about thinking about signs. So we need a way to know when we shouldn't include the sign. Um, right now, this might seem kind of a dumb and useless uh, symbol to, to, to bring up, and I might be seeming to be uh, uh, silly about uh, inventing this new symbol here. Uh, again, I'm gonna, gonna a little bit ask you to trust me over time, um, I think we're going to see that having a separate symbol for magnitudes makes it much easier to get the signs right as we go through harder and harder problems um, in the videos about physics. Okay, um, so I would not write my answer like this because I would use this symbol for the acceleration. But the question wasn't asking about the acceleration, it was asking about the magnitude of the acceleration. So here's how I would write my answer. Here was the magnitude of the acceleration. Let's write that up here as well. The magnitude of the acceleration equals 0.636 meters per second squared. All this time I've, I've been obsessing so much about writing down signs. Why didn't I write down the sign here? Well, you never write down the sign for a magnitude, because magnitudes are always positive. So the mag magnitudes are one thing that you should not write down the signs for, because they're always positive. Um, and again, now we've invented a new symbol. When we're talking about the acceleration, we'll use this symbol. But when we're talking about the magnitude of the acceleration, we'll use this symbol. So maybe I'll go back. The question was actually asking us not about a sub x. It was asking about a sub x with a dot on top of it. It was asking about the magnitude of the acceleration. OK. Uh, so we've answered that question. Uh, but we can't forget, we still have another question. All right, I'm going to erase some of my work here, so I hope that you have this in your notes so I can make some more space for myself. acceleration, I'm going to go back and plug that in up here. We know that the acceleration is 0.636. Uh, and now, if I'm thinking about the overall acceleration, we need the sign there again. So the acceleration overall is positive 0.636, uh, even though the question was just asking us for the magnitude. Now we have to go back and answer the other question. The other question was asking us for delta x. Remember, we only need three numbers to uh, pick out an equation. So here we have more than we need. We actually have four numbers. Um, what that means is that we can use almost any equation that we want. We can use any equation from the list as long as it has a delta x in it. If you know four numbers now, you can actually use any equation that you want from the list as long as you use one of the ones that has delta x in it. So you just use whichever one feels most convenient for you. But you don't have to use this equation. You can use any equation that you want as long as it has a delta x in it, because we're trying to solve for delta x. So now let's plug in delta x. We don't plug in for that. That's the question. Uh, the initial x is still 0. Let's put that in parentheses. Our time is 11 plus 1 half. I use parentheses to plug in the acceleration. Now, when we're using our kinematics formulas, we always plug in the signed numbers, not the magnitudes. So the acceleration here is positive 
0.636. The question was asking for the magnitude of the acceleration, but that's not what we use when we're plugging into the kinematics formulas. The formulas are about the signed uh, accelerations. And then t squared would be 11 squared. Now this term is going to drop out because 0 times 11 is 0. Uh, so 1 half times 0.636 is 0.318. And 11 squared is 121. You can use your calculator to make those calculations. Use your calculator to make this calculation. 0.318 times 121. On your calculator that will come out to be approximately 38 0.5. If you round off, you can round this off to about 38.5. Well, this is not a good answer yet. This is the displacement, so we need a units of meters. Um, and uh, the question was asking, oh, so what's the sign here? The sign here is positive. Um, we came out with a positive number. Um, does that make sense? Well, sure. Um, we chose the direction of motion to be the positive direction. So this better come out positive. If this had come out negative, we would know we made a mistake. Maybe this is not exactly what the question was asking us for here. In a sense, the question is just asking maybe just for the distance. How far did the object travel in this time? So I might just express that here as uh, the magnitude of the displacement. It might be a little bit weird to say that it traveled, how far did it travel? Positive 38.5. That seems a little bit weird. Uh, maybe it's better to give the answer as the magnitude. Oh, let me not forget the units. OK, so here's some good answers to the question. The magnitude of the acceleration is approximately 0.636 meters per second squared. And um, how far did it travel? Um, approximately uh, 38.5 uh, meters is what we got out. By the way, your answers might slightly differ from this because of rounding error. Depending on what order you answered the questions and depending on what equations you used, you might have gotten slightly different answers um, out. Um, if you did, one way to um, make sure you're doing it right is just in, um, include more decimal places. So notice how we, we ended up including uh, more decimal places than usual in this acceleration because we were going to use it to calculate something else. If you include enough decimal places, you should get answers that are pretty close to the answers that I have here on the board. The new thing we did here was dealing with a problem that has two separate questions. Well, put in two separate question marks. Um, and as long as you have three numbers, you can be confident that you're going to be able to answer both of the questions. You can usually answer the questions in whichever order uh, that you like. Um, and once you've answered one of the questions, then you'll have four numbers. And then you can use any equation that you like, pretty much, to answer the final question. You just have to use an equation that involves the, the variable that the question is about. If this problem gave you difficulty, please don't proceed until you redo the problem, until it doesn't give you difficulty. In this problem, we also introduced um, a symbol that's going to be more and more important as we go through more and more topics in physics. Um, when we just use a variable, um, say a sub x, this indicates a signed number. So we should indicate whether it's positive or negative. But when we put a dot on top of it, we're going to use that as a symbol for a magnitude. So that's an unsigned number, where we don't indicate a magnitude. That's not a symbol you're going to see in any textbook. Uh, but it's going to be really useful to us to avoid getting confused about science as we work through further topics in physics.